Hi, I'm James Bruce from MakeYourself.com and today I'll be talking about the Grid Seed 5-chip dual minor ASIC devices. We're giving one away over at MakeYourself.com and there should be a short URL directly to the giveaway just down there somewhere. Before I talk about these, some of you are probably wondering what ASIC means. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit, which just means it's a chip that's designed to do one thing and one thing only. Unlike computers, which can be programmed to do anything, basically, an ASIC will only do one thing, but it'll do it more efficiently than a computer. Now, Litecoin was originally created to be ASIC resistant because of the memory requirements based upon a new algorithm called script. And since then, a plethora of script-based coins has also been created, such as Dogecoin. However, nothing can resist ASICs for long, and we could talk all day about whether this is a good thing for old currencies or not. After all, the power consumption is an environmental nightmare right now. But the point is that once the cat is out of the bag, once an ASIC has been created, you kind of need to get into ASICs to carry on if you want to stay in the game. So on to these. These are five chip ASIC devices, devices from Gridseed. They cost $150 for a bare unit or $200 including a power supply, but you can power more than one with one power supply if you have the right splitter. If you have more money to spend, they also make an 80 chip version which is incredibly powerful and that sets you back about $1200. There is a certain beauty to these ASICs, the circuitry hidden away under this huge copper heatsink, and they have an intense fan on top, which keeps them running incredibly cool even when overclocked. The fan, you'll notice, doesn't have any form of protection, so be very careful if you handle these while they're running. I've chipped quite a few fingernails off already and it really hurts. The fan should be placed upside when running. Each one has just two ports, the power, and a mini USB cable. Let me show you one running now to see what it actually sounds like if it's quite loud. There you go, I don't know if you can hear it. It's not as bad as a graphics card, but you can, you can certainly hear something. Now these are dual mining ASICs, which means they can mine both Bitcoin and Litecoin or script derivatives at the same time, in fact, or they can only mine one or the other. In BTC, a Bitcoin only mode, you're looking at about 60 watts power consumption and 11 giga hashes per second, which isn't amazing. In dual mining mode, that drops down to 8 giga hashes and less than 300 kilo hashes per second for script coins. And that's with a total power consumption of about 65 watts. The best way to run them, by which I mean the most power efficient, is in script only mode, where you can overclock them to a maximum of around 370 kilo hashes per second, which uses only 10 watts of power. Now compare that to a top of the line graphics card, the R9 290, which eats up about 400 watts of power and nets you only twice as much the hash rate of one of these. So in other words, the power efficiency in script only mode on one of these ASICs is 20 times that of a graphics card. So there's a clear improvement there. Now, these aren't entirely self-contained. You do still need a controller of some sort to get work from the internet and send the results back. So of course you can either use a computer not the best way to do it. Or you can buy dedicated hardware controllers if you have lots of them. But the best thing I've found is to repurpose a Raspberry Pi. And this is running a pre-built image called Scripter, which gives you a lovely web interface. And it's of course very low power consumption. If I plug these both in, you can see that with two devices, We've got the, uh, the powered USB hub, a network switch, Raspberry Pi, and we're still only getting, what, under 20 watts there. I'd expect that to go up to a little bit to 25 watts when they get going. So let me just show you the Raspberry Pi web interface. It's accessible from any machine on the network, and it shows you the current speed and number of accepted shares. Setting the devices up on Windows is a lot more difficult, but there are links in the full review to cryptominingblog.com, which has a great tutorial on how to run it in dual mining mode. 
So should you buy one? Well, it's a big risk. The return on investment with these right now can't actually be guaranteed. And right now a single unit would be making you less than a dollar a day in profits. So if profit is your only motivation, purchasing and holding coins is, is still your best option and always has been. If, however, you'd like to be a part of the network that secures cryptocurrencies and potentially be rewarded for it when the values go to the moon, or if you're currently mining on GPUs and simply want to stay in the game, then one of these is essential, one or more of these. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for even more reviews and a weekly Technophilia technology podcast. Head over to the short URL at the bottom to enter and win one of these, and thank you for watching.